Hi everyone, um, my name is Tina and currently I'm working with Babel as a senior growth strategist. Just as a disclaimer and to set expectations, we are not in Asia and, <laughs> and um, the reason we are here is to just kind of interact with such, such amazing startups and people and you're doing some fabulous work out there. I'm super impressed to see that. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today is really about certain go-to-market approaches. I have worked in startups for a long time and right now working with Babel, there are over 700 people right now. Um, there are different go-to-market strategies that we can learn from and I thought it would be a nice opportunity to come and share the many different ways you can do go-to-market and I hope you find this useful. Oh, right there, sorry. You'll understand the slide in just a bit. Um, so I was working with the startup like about three years ago and um, the founder of the startup kind of comes in to a meeting room and just tells me that, hey Tina, I've got some exciting news for you. And um, I'm like, oh, I am looking forward to hear that, but at the same time, I kind of feel butterflies in my tummy, and uh, not the exciting kinds, but the ones that make you nervous. And he says, well, we're launching a new geo in the next four weeks. We're going to scale, and let's plan for the launch. And just then, um, I was kind of wondering, like, what does that mean for me? And then he starts to walk out of the room, and just then he just turns around and says that, oh, wait a minute, we'll have to go to market with just about the same budget. Well, if you know what I mean, this is the language that most startups speak. They don't have the money, they want to grow fast, and so what is it that you can do in such situations? At this point, I'd like to say that over the last 13 years, I've worked in startups, I've had my own company, and now working at Babel, I kind of feel that there is a way, there is no single way to go to market, but there are ways that you can collaborate and mix and match newer approaches that startups have today, at the same time in a well-rounded, depth-related approaches that larger companies can look at from a go-to-market approach. Well, oh. to me, going to market is like witchcraft. Well, no kidding, because it is a craft, a craft that you build over time. And at the same time, why do I call it witchcraft? It's because it can go wrong, or you can come up with a magic potion that will probably shower you a lot of money with. Um, one of the things I wanted to share is that it's important that you prepare for your go-to-market approach in a manner that you, you invest the time to see what could possibly go wrong ahead of time. I think a lot of startups don't invest the time that they need ahead of time, and therefore a lot of things happen on a very reactive basis. The other that I wanted to highlight is that go-to-market strategies mean different things to different people. When you're working with teams, you're working with investors, different stakeholders, be sure to know that you have aligned your experience of how you want to go to market. For example, once I remember telling one of my team members that, hey, we're going to launch in X city. Um, how soon can you be ready with your go-to-market plan? And he comes up and tells me that, how about this evening? I was like surprised. I'm like, that's super quick. You must, be, you must have some superpowers. And the next thing I know is that he comes to me with a Google ad search campaign. So <laughs> with that in mind, it's important to define as, um, as an owner, what is it that you want to expect from your go-to-market uh, perspective? Uh, you know you are a startup when you have heard 
of words like PMF. You, you have to deliver on growth as of yesterday. You're making small bets before scaling. You have extremely limited resources, budget, people, and time. And you're agile, thankfully enough. Um, you can make quick decisions and, of course, fewer stakeholders. So it's easy to get everyone aligned and get going. Most of all, everything is a priority. I remember one of the investors in a previous startup saying that this startup has 10 number one priorities. That's a startup. <laughs> and having said that, there are the larger organizations. I would define them someone roughly um, over 500 people or so. Sometimes even 300 can be a crowd. Um, You're primarily looking for larger revenues, um, probably market share, and you're making big and calculated bets. When you do make big and calculated bets, it also means that there's a lot of money on the line and therefore you just cannot go wrong. These are the times that it probably makes sense to go through a much more detailed go-to-market approach. And also, you're gifted with a lot more time, people, money, um, most of all, it's hard to align stakeholders who are spread across different offices, locations, and teams, of course. And most of all, company prior prioritization is a key to help you getting moving faster. Um, the next part and the last part of this presentation is about, um, I've tried to put two kinds of go-to-market approaches that I've seen on the same slide. Uh, it's quite a few stuff to read in it. Um, but what I wanted to highlight is one is an approach that I call quick and dirty. It is the startup approach to going to market. You don't have the time. And in the situation that I highlighted right in the beginning of this presentation, this probably makes more sense. Um, quickly going through it is first try to give, get a good sense of the market beforehand. Um, look at Google Keyword Planner, Google Trends, some sort of uh, audience insights that you might get from Facebook, etc. It'll give you a good idea if the demand really exists right now. Understand your competitors, get a sense of what landing pages and how the user journeys are like right in the beginning. Very quick and dirty, nothing very fancy or detailed. Um, last but not the least, not last, the second point most important is go talk to your customers. A lot of, a lot of startups I have seen working with refrain from talking to customers. Nine out of 10 times, I would say 9.99% of the times, your go-to-market plans change after you go talk to, the, to your users. Um, la, third, thirdly, make your plan and get it done. You're going to fail. It's important to know that right in the beginning because it's going to change over time. And that's where you move on to your fourth step, which is about go ahead, reiterate, make the plan again and test it, but test it fast. Unfortunately, uh, larger organizations don't have that liberty to do it um, because just the bets are just so large and huge that you, as much as you want to be faster, but it isn't the case. What I really recommend is first invest a good enough time to do some sort of sizing of the opportunity, total addressable market, what is the revenue potential? It's quite likely you might be off, you might be way overestimating, you might be underestimating, but at the same time, when you have done this back of the envelope calculations, if you have more money, of course, you can hire a research agency to do that for you, but I think in today's times, there are other and better ways to use the money. Um, this is a good way to understand how much investment you should be making before you actually go to the market. Second is an in-depth competitive analysis. I think this is very important. If it's an already crowded market, there's really no, I mean, you have to really think about it, go, uh, think about going into it. Um, the third is user research. Very, very important, especially for startups here in Berlin or any other country going to another country 
a few of the startups have already highlighted, that um, cultural differences make a huge difference. Your product here may not be accepted over there, or it needs to go through a certain set of changes. You need to know that you have the capacity, ability, and the investment possible to make the changes and go to market. And most of all, even after you make the changes, it's not necessary that your product will be super successful. Um, PMF at scale, I think this is also important. You've got a PMF, let's say in Germany, but when you go to an Asian market, for example, PMF for them will mean completely different. Asians are more conscious to um, paying for a service, so you really need to understand what are the key purchase considerations for them and how will you communicate to them. Maybe in a market you don't need to communicate at all over here, but when you go to another market, it becomes more important. Suddenly, everything that you were doing right in one country is no longer right in another. And knowing and investing your time and effort in knowing about these things before you go to market can save you a lot of trouble later. Lastly, you build your go-to-market plan. A few of the fantastic startups before me have already approached it in a very nice way. Joint ventures and partnerships in Japan, for example. How will you go about and um, have someone in the country so that you kind of get a sense of their cultural influences, uh, influences and be able to then go to market faster, easier. It's very, very hard to run companies, especially in Asian markets from Berlin itself. And last, evaluate your risks. Thank you very much, and I hope this was helpful. I know it was not a presentation about Babel, but coming here, um, I thought it was interesting. It would be interesting for everyone here to see different approaches, and uh, now I'm open for questions. Thank you.